So once again, I really want to thank you ladies for coming together, um, especially at this late hour. Um, I'm not sure what time it is where you are, but it is 9 p.m. here. So um, I run all day long, probably starting at six o'clock in the morning. And there's so many different things that I do throughout the day because my platform outside of doing this podcast, I actually publish a digital entertainment magazine, um, which I've actually been running for since 2013. So um, I launched this magazine. Um, I've been an independent journalist pretty much all of my career. So um, I had this big dream of working for BET and doing all this different stuff. And while I did accomplish that, by the time I did accomplish it, it was just like, eh, I don't want to do that no more. I just want to do my own thing. Um, I don't really like being told what to do and what I can't do and who I can cover and who I can't cover and what I have to ask them and that sort of thing. I've never been, I guess, kind of quote unquote, like the TMZs or anything like that. So um, I don't really like going for like the crazy stuff or the stuff that sells. Um, <laughs> I kind of like to make the stuff that doesn't sell, sell. So uh, that's kind of where I am. But Again, my platform, it includes that magazine. Um, I launched my own PR firm some years ago so that I could kind of hire a team of interns or whatever, and they could actually do my PR um, instead of me paying a publicist because I have been paying a publicist for so long. So that actually has worked out pretty well for me. Um, so I work with some of the colleges and universities and whatnot in terms of bringing people in and then kind of showing them the ropes and showing them what to do and how to do certain things, how to reach out to people. And then a lot of times they'll do my own, P they'll do my PR for me or they'll book people for my show or for, or for the podcast, for the magazine. And then I also host a, a radio platform on Saturdays. So um, I do that. I have a podcast with my son and I, um, more recently I launched a, podcasting network so pretty soon i'll have some other podcasts that are running on my network once i figure out all of the uh, technical stuff and get the right platforms and all that stuff together then i'll have that going so i have that entrepreneurial spirit um and i love what i'm doing so um that's what matters most. you ladies come in yeah you ladies come in um I love media. I love doing interviews. I love being able to connect with people who are doing like the things that I consider awesome. And I think that what you're doing is awesome. Outside of it being the whiz, I love stage plays. I have traveled. I'm in Cleveland. I have driven to Houston to um, cover a play. Um, I've, I've gone to Killeen, Texas. Um, I've been somewhere everywhere. So I will drive to see a good stage play. So who knows? Maybe I'm maybe I could pop up over the weekend or something. Come but, on, um, all of all of that being said, um, I love the whiz. I love what you you know. Obviously, what I've read of what you're doing. Um, but I would love for you to kind of start off by just kind of talking a little bit about the play itself like why did why did you or what got you involved i won't say why did you do it but what got you involved with kind of recreating the whiz camera <laughs> <laughs> i think it we just because we all connected through tamra and yeah um, i would say her vision like she's for the past 10 years plus maybe She's always wanted, she's put on productions. It's not just been um, being a studio, you know, dance studio owner. She's always pushed her um, students to do more. And so we've done several productions. And the, of course, the Wiz, like, why not? Right. So it's like, hey, we can do the Wiz. Yeah, we can do the Wiz. Let's do it. Right. And um, that's it. Like that, I think, you know, her bringing us together. We've been working together all 10 of the years. Um on all of the productions yep. okay. together. So we we know each other. We know the flow, how we're going to move, what we're going to do. So, you know, I would say that's what brought us together. But, like, why not the Wiz? It's the Wiz. Right. Now, is this the first, I, I guess, kind of the first run of the production of the Wiz? Or have you done it before? Or yeah, We've done it before three times. This is our third time, right? This, this is, is our third. third. This is our third okay. production of the Wiz. 
So kind of take me back to the first time that, you know, obviously you put this on. What kind of was the overall reception of it? And I ask that because there's believe it. I mean, I'm sure you know that there's so many people that they don't really know, like the Wiz, as much as they know the Wizard of Oz. Um, but like when I go back and I mean, I, I'll be honest, like I grew up watching the Wizard of Oz. And I mean, obviously, Diana Ross and Michael Jackson and Nipsey Russell and like so many people are in the Wiz. Um, and then when I went back and watched it, it was like, damn, like I really, really like this. But, you know, obviously we all know much more about the Wizard of Oz itself. So like what kind of was the reception as you were putting this on and trying to get people to come out and actually see it? Um, I think the reception, I feel like every time we do a production, it's always well received. Um, Again, like we said, you know, this is tied into a dance studio. So these are, you know, young students who are learning a a singular art, essentially, when they're in the dance studio. But creating the production now takes it to a new level and it adds in new parts of that artistry for them. Um, and so I think for everyone, it's always well received. I think the kids are always excited, um, especially once they make it past the studio and get into a theater or a space and they're like, oh my goodness, there's a stage. Oh my goodness, people are singing. Wait a second, they're <laughs> singing and dancing. Now there's lights. Now, you know, so I think the children are always super excited because there's so many new aspects for them to be introduced to. And then I think for parents and family members and people who come out to see the shows and support the shows, I think it's great for them and they always receive it well too because for them, you know, they're like, oh, my daughter, she's in dance school. Oh, my daughter does whatever. And then they come see this huge production and they're like oh my goodness no my child was at the theater you know my child was on stage <laughs> um you know and then there's a bit of nostalgia too you know because parents and you know all of us older folks we've grown up like you said watching these films and you know watching these artists the michael jackson's and the diana Rosses. so to be able to see that on another generation of kids you know it's really just an awesome thing right. so i feel like we always are well received when we put on any of these productions now as now as each of you talk, I will more than likely kind of blurt out some things that obviously I I've, I've learned about you and you know because I've been, you know, kind of reading up on everybody. Um <laughs> it, it seems a little difficult obviously because I mean of course we're doing video, which I mean I I'll, I'll do everything I need to do to make sure that we get obviously the video and the audio up, but definitely when it goes live tonight on Spotify, Apple, iHeart and all of the different platforms it's just going to be audio. So for everybody that's actually listening to this, we were just hearing from Candace Osborne. So you play Eveline? Yes, I play Eveline, okay. honey. So tell 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 me up there, there is nothing evil about you. You don't have an evil bone in your body from what I can see. So <laughs> how did you end up playing that character? <laughs> Honestly, that's the best part of playing the character for me because I feel like in real life, I'm totally opposite of that. That is truly the fun of it because I really get to become someone completely different. Um, and that's right. that's just honestly the best part of it for me. Um, and the way I came into Eveline, I'll just be honest, I did not read the script and come in and do a full audition and do the things. I praise God every day for having people around me who believe in me and know my strengths and know my abilities and just believe that I am capable. Um, and that is honestly what it was. It was like, hey, listen, um, we really think you can do this. And so here's the song. Here's the so-and-so. Just come on and let us see see, see what you're going to give right. us. And I was like, all right, challenge accepted. Let me let me pull it together. Let me figure it out. Let me find a <laughs> note, you know. And um, that was it. I met Nzinga, um, Nzinga at Tamara's house one night. And it was like, okay, girl, you gonna sing this song for us? Like, let's let's make sure you can deliver it. And I was like, whoo, <laughs> I sang the song. I hope they liked it. Like, you right. know, um, but no, the, having played Eveline, this is like the third time uh being able to play this role. And like I said, I honestly just 
thoroughly enjoy it just because it allows me to step outside of my normal everyday self. You know, I'm on an airplane some days and I'm greeting, I'm serving Cokes and a smile, you know, I'm doing everything else. So it's <laughs> always really upbeat and really nice and soft and gentle. So to be able to pull out Eveline darling and, you know, give the kids a little run around, it's a great moment. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I, you know, obviously, you know, that's one of that's one of the goals of any actor or actress is to be able to step outside of who they are and, you know, play a character that nobody, you know, would, would imagine them playing or nobody would see them in. Like, obviously, Eveline, when you think of The Wiz, you know, for people that know The Wiz, that's like one of the bigger characters of the film. Um, yes, it is. One of my favorite characters was always um, Nipsey Russell. Um, mm. and cause I, I was telling you how I, I put a lot of their music that, what was it? Slide some oil on me. That was like one of the first songs last week that I put on my playlist. Like, I don't know what made me want to hear that, but, um, her character is probably, I would say one of the biggest characters or one of the most memorable characters of the film or of the Wiz. Like, was there any, I guess, anxiety and taking on that role, like obviously you want to do something outside of your comfort zone, but what was the feeling of taking that role on? Yeah, I think the biggest, like you said, um, it's kind of ironic because if you see the film and you know the play, her role is really technically small, although her character is larger than life. You know, she right, doesn't, right. there aren't a whole lot of lines. There isn't a whole lot to it. It's one long song. It's a few lines and your girl is gone. You know, so I think if there's any anxiety, <laughs> it's really making sure that in those few lines and that one song and dance number, you make sure mm -hmm. that they remember who Eveline was. I think that's the exactly. biggest part of the job is because that is the only time they're going to see you. They'll hear about you a few times, but that is mm -hmm. the only time they're going to see you and have that moment with you. So the biggest thing I think when it comes to playing Eveline is making sure that you deliver over deliver on that character in that little bit of time that you have with that audience. Now you have kind of stepping outside of the whiz, you have 15 years of experience, you know, and touring and dance and yes. like you've been out here, you, like you've been out here. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like yes. talk, talk a little you. bit about, talk a little bit more about your background. Like that's one of the things that I really want to do, you know, in us talking tonight is really kind of showcase and spotlight you, you, you ladies. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, my background starts as a studio kid, as a studio dancer. Um, Tamara has been, you know, one of my teachers and mentors and greatest friends since I was a child. Um, I'm originally from New York, so I originally started dancing there. Um, and then we moved to Atlanta and we joined a, I joined a dance company here and then Tamara ended up teaching there. Um, and from there, I just kind of was just exposed to so many other things. You know, um, Tamara taught us a lot. We got to travel a lot as kids while we were competing. We'd go to different cities. You know, she'd take us on big trips to New York where we could study underneath the greats. Um, and so I just got exposed to things. And within that, I just really was like, okay, this is my thing. Um, but then on the other hand, because I was so studious and stuff as a kid growing up, I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to dance. I'm going to just go to college. You know, I'll study law or something. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. You know, this dancing thing was great, but, and lo and behold, I get to college, I go to St. John's University, and I think within the first or second year, I mean, my focus was still dance. I became, like, the vice president of the Caribbean Student Association. I was the dance captain over their dance team, and so it was just like, okay, baby, there's no running away from this thing. Um, and yeah, from there, I started doing small tours. Uh, Tamika and I, we went on some BET tours with some local artists and some up and coming artists. Um, and then I came back home to Atlanta. I joined a performance burlesque group, which was called Kitty's Litter. Um, if anyone is familiar with Project Runway, um, uh, Michael Knight, rest in peace. We love you. Um, he 
he and a good friend of his, uh, Satchel Jester, started a performance group. And so I joined them. Um, and for that, from there, everything just took off. I've been able to dance with some of the greats, um, you know, the new additions, BBDs, uh, Carrie Hilsons, the Tweets, the Joys, um, Little Wayne. All, uh, the people that, all the people that I love. <laughs> Sean Garrett, Little Wayne. All Wayne's the people so that I love, people. like the Tweets. And New Edition is touring right now. And like all these people, like that's amazing. Yeah. So it has truly been a blessing. It honestly has. I mean, I just believe, you know, like what is for you is for you. Um, And, you know, I just this this was in, intended for me. And I'm just thankful for all the experiences and all the places that have allowed me to thrive and continue to grow as an artist. Okay. Now, Nazinga, you are vocal coach and vocal arranger for the production? Yes, I am. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that and just the experience, the, the experience of doing that. Well, first of all, let me say the only person who can get me out of retirement is Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what are you talking about? What are you talking about retirement? You look like you're 35. Like, stop. Right. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, at about three years and there we have it. But I, um, Tamara gets me out of it. So, but it is fun. Like I do love music. I've always loved it. Um, and so she puts me in a place where she pushes me, um, to push the children, um, because she has so much to, to Candace's point, she has so much faith in us. And sometimes I think more so than I have in myself, because I'm like, this is big. Like, you want me to do this? Like people can, like, you, you sure? Um, even though I'm I don't want to stop you. I'm going to just grab something, but I'm listening as you're talking. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, even though I've done this work for years, um, it's always, you know, fascinating. It's always fun. It's always challenging. Um, I get to work with people like Tamika, who never have sang prior to I sang in the church putting prior. her on the stage. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know that. But I, it's it's just been it's been one amazing journey working with this production and these group of people for the past ten. I don't even know if it's ten, ten plus. I don't know. It's it's right. It's been a long time. That's what we know. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> now I I just I think it's very exciting just what you ladies have. Um, I think that you have w what sounds to be an amazing production. Like I definitely will be tuned in, especially if it live streams, like are there ways for you to catch like the, the, the past productions of it? Because I know you said this is your third time. So like, are the, are the past productions anywhere or are they for sale or? Mm, I no. think you would have to. Tweet. I don't know if they're still up anywhere. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, moving over to our next square, Tamika. Hello. <laughs> so let so talk a little bit about your role in the in the entire production. Well, I'm playing Ada Pearl. Um, she's the whimsical and confused and uh, goofy sometimes. <laughs> just. <laughs> She's just all over the place, um, you know, character right. who, uh, she's just, she's just funny. She's just a funny lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Samika so bring, bring so, the I mean, w what was it like for you to take on that role? It wasn't hard because <laughs> I'm all, I'm already <laughs> silly, uh, um, yeah, I'm I'm whimsical. I don't I don't get whimsical from you though. Oh so. well, you know, I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just got to spend a little <laughs> bit more time with her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's she's funny. So <laughs> I um fall into that character pretty easily. I'm not sure exactly why they chose Ada Pearl for me, you know, but um, you know, I I I like it. <laughs> I like her. 
Well, when when you say that, as far as they chose Ada Pearl for you, did did you try out for any other roles within the production or? I I didn't. So um, when it was Tamra and I guess it was Nazinga and we have um, Jamia Tucker as our director as well, and I think they selected what they wanted us to play, kind of based on just their trust, as we keep saying, their trust in what we can do and uh, and just knowing us. For so long, they know what we're capable of and what we can execute um, right. well. So, yeah. So, I mean, I appreciate them choosing Ada Pearl because she's, she's a blast. Okay. Now, now, outside of The Wiz, talk a little bit about your background as well and, you know, the things that you've worked on outside of The Wiz. Um, so I certainly grew up in the same studio as Candice. We grew up um, under Tamara. Um, touring, doing small tour. I did the uh, BET tours. I didn't go as big as Candace, but I did do um, Hawks for two, Atlanta Hawks for two years. Um, that was while I was in school. I was at Spelman College. I studied acting there, danced there. Um, and then, so, and then I just became a teacher. I have a company called Little Stars Dance and Tumbling, which goes to uh, schools around okay. Atlanta and teach dance and tumbling classes. So, but yeah, and I have a 13 year old okay. who's in the production and he is killing it too. So that's exciting. Oh, wow. Yes. And Tamika like, has choreographed oh. a lot of the numbers oh, in the yeah. production. I as well. Don't let her forget that. Sorry, I forgot that. Forgot. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> You Don't can't forget that. Like that's that that's huge. Yeah. You can't forget exactly. that. Exactly. I'm one of the teachers for Triple Seven Dance Studio and I do um a lot of the choreography for the studio as well. Okay. So when I think of when I think of the fact that you have a 13 year old who's in the production with you, um, it kind of puts me in mind of me doing the podcast with my son. Like that's one of the I think that's one of the coolest things to do this podcast with him. Um, and our podcast is actually it's it's music and entertainment, but it's centered around that generational gap. So, like, mm -hmm. obviously, he's 15 mm -hmm. and I'm 45. So when it comes to music and what we're listening to, we are on opposite ends of the spectrum. And he's listening to the money bag yo's and. Some kid from Cincinnati named No Cap. I thought he was just telling me No Cap. Like, No Cap, Dad, No Cap. He's talking about some artist out of Cincinnati. So he can teach me about those people. See, I, it's got you confused too, Candace. I was, <laughs> no idea. I, I what are you talking about? But um, <laughs> we kind of bridged that gap. Like, I, I, I always felt like there's so much that I can teach him about, you know, the SWVs and um, the Aretha Franklins. And uh, like, I, I'm always playing, uh, uh, what's her name? Angela Wimbush. And you know, mm -hmm. those kind of artists versus the people that he's listening to. I think there's so much I can teach him about my music and there's so much that he can teach me about his and he can kind of make me open my eyes and open my ears to some of the younger artists and actually give them a chance. Whereas in a lot of ways, I really don't. So um, that's what our um, podcast is, and it's called The Generation Gap. But me doing that with him is probably like one of the coolest things because he knows music. I know music. He loves music. I love music. We have um, people in the family who are um, celebrities, too. So it just kind of is cool to be able to go and do work and actually be doing it with him. And he can travel with me when I go out and cover stuff and that sort of thing. So when I think of you. And having, you know, your child in the production with you, like, what is that like for you to kind of see him following in your footsteps? Oh, it's just, it's fun to see because, I mean, he's, I won't tell him this, but he's way better than what I was when I was his age. So I will never tell him that. <laughs> so I can just, I can only imagine how <laughs> great he's going to be, you know, once he's my age or, you know, it's just. It's a joy to see. I, I don't yeah. get teared up on the side of the stage or anything. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm not. Now, 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 I'm that kind of dad that 
when, when I'm that kind of dad that when my son does stuff, I actually am the one standing on the side of the stage crying. So yeah, her too. So yeah, I, I won't say I won't say that I do, <laughs> but maybe I do, and maybe I don't. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, in ter- in terms of the play, and I guess kind of goals of the Wiz, like, what do you feel like you want? What do you feel like you want to accomplish this time around? What do you feel like you want it to do? You know, with this being the third time. I would say, like, bring us to get like what it's doing. It's bringing us together. It's getting us, A, out of the house during COVID. Let's talk about that, right? But then, right. two, bridging that gap, like what you talked about even with son. Like, we are putting ourselves in a position to bring generations of individuals together with a shared story. Mm-hmm. Like, the story has profound, in-depth meaning if you dig deep. Um, and even if you stay on the surface, it's still deep meaning. Um, so I think we, this time and every time, we're bring not only are we highlighting these young children who've never had this opportunity, like Candace said, like when they walk on the stage, like literally just seeing the pop ups when they saw that their characters were in pop ups in the lobby, they went crazy. Even the grown right. people who are in the production who have you know let them tell it the you know litany of experience, it's like, oh, can I take my pop up home? Like, is this mine? You know, right. so helping them to and exposing us like when I think about us as you know you know brown children um to this because that's what the wiz did for us it exposed us right to the story that looked like us versus the story that looked like someone else so exactly. we can all like I could see myself as Dorothy but before I didn't because it's like oh I am and yeah okay yeah right. but when I saw the wiz I'm like maybe yeah, it's, it was something else. It was something that you could actually relate to. Exactly. Yes. So I think that's what it does. It, you know, it's exposing us to us. Um, and I feel like it probably would be, a, like, I feel like it would be a little bit easier now also just because, you know, considering where we are now time-wise, like, there's a lot of kids today who really, they don't, they don't know anything about The Wiz, let alone The Wizard of Oz. So it's like it's something new. To, it's something new to a lot of kids now, unless they, you know, grew up and their parents were showing them the Wizard of Oz or the Wiz or anything. It, it's really new to a lot of kids now. It is. Um, I think another aspect that's just really great about it is just putting kids in the theater, taking them out of a phone, off of TikTok. You know what I mean? Right. It's <laughs> these very confined personal spaces of just doing yeah. things. And it's putting them in these larger capacities with other people and they have to interact and be large and just vibe and feel all those energies and all those moving parts and all those. Like, I think that's an aspect that has to be maintained considering the age that we're in of technology and being, Mm -hmm. you know, just like even right now with us, you know, talking through a computer with one another and doing it this way. I think it's great to still have spaces like theater where bodies have to physically come together together and interchange energies and and vibe and moments and so i think that's a really great part to to be continuing and keeping children interested in as well right now nazinga you mentioned you know obviously getting people out of the house and you know you know due to the pandemic and whatnot like how has the pandemic affected the production uh, where, like, where are you in terms of the pandemic and obviously keeping people safe when they come out? Um, well, you know, we're masking, so we're rehearsing in masks. Um, we're taking temperatures. You don't walk in the building without temperature, temperature being taken. Um, mm-hmm. Children have been sent home. Um, adults have not, you know, we, all of us, like, so we are taking that precaution. Even the day of the show for audience members is the same. Um, the expectation mm-hmm. that matters worn of course doing the scenes the actors are not masked now but the um dancers are um so we're taking all the precautions um necessary and um you know and we're just trusting god um 
church girl and me just had to put that out there. We are trusting God. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> and and we've we've been successful at it. You know, we had a great run last week, knock on wood. We haven't heard anything about anybody. We still doing everyone's still safe. We're gonna have another great right. run on Saturday. Um so we yes. are doing covering all you know health measures. There are two nurses that were there um you know Saturday. So it's not it's Tamara doesn't play, right? And, and, and we right. Don't her, we don't play either. And so we make sure that people are feel safe and you know we're doing things in a safe manner. I think that's great. And you know obviously it's great to see everybody back out working in that type of space and you know able to get you know, bodies in these seats because people people miss being able to go out and see shows and, you know, concerts and plays. And, you know, again, I, I love good stage plays. So is there anywhere this is kind of where I would ask you to kind of kind of let everybody know, like where they can find more information or is there a website where we can go and actually look at, you know, not only you ladies, but everybody else that's a part of the production as well? So Instagram, um, look, okay. look, let me make sure I say it right. Triple seven. Right. Look, I was about to say the same thing. I'm like, okay, let me make sure. And I pulled yeah, up. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. For, yeah, I think it would be easier to go. Actually, if you go to Gas South, let me go in here. Oh, you Gas can see. And then the Instagram is triple seven dance studio. Um, and the number okay. seven, yeah. if they go to triple seven dance studio underscore, so triple the uh -huh. number seven dance studio underscore, um, you can find, because there are pictures, there are advertisements, so there's pictures of a lot of, you can see the characters, um, those who are playing in yeah. time, like you can see all of that if you go to the Instagram and um, go to the link. I think even, I know I have a link for tickets on uh, my um, Instagram as well, which is just Nazinga B. So we have, and like Tamika said, Gas South, if you go directly to their website, um, you'll see their, you know, the listing of productions that they are presenting in. Right. Yeah, I would love to go on and kind of see the pictures and see who's playing like the lion and who's playing the uh, the Tin Man and like all of that stuff. Like I, I, just hearing about the production, I'm like, I wish I could be there to see it. But I'll definitely, um, if it's streaming live, I'll definitely be watching it live, though. Please do. Yeah. Um, are there any are there any kind of I guess I would say final thoughts or anything that you really wanted to get out there with the conversation today? Here's your ticket. <laughs> if you haven't yeah, got right, it. okay. Get a ticket. And if you can't live stream, like literally go to Triple Seven's um, Instagram. Like it is a production that's worth it. Um, you mentioned something, and I just think it's important to highlight this. You mentioned something about wanting to see the people, to see the costumes and the makeup. Like the team that has been put together to create these looks, it is, I promise you, because there's like this urban and right now twist on these historic characters. But you know mm -hmm. who they are. Like you Evelyn walks in where you know she's Evelyn, but the time that they took to create the hair yeah. to do the makeup and the costume, it is, I'm telling you, amazing and worth the watch. It's worth to buy a ticket if you're not in Georgia to buy the streaming ticket. It is worth it because just I will be getting that streaming ticket. The fact that the acting and the dancing is like bar none. Like forget that it's amazing. Then when you see, <laughs> like when they walk here, because this year we, they shifted, like it's not, they don't look like they did when we did it a couple of years ago. No. And I'm right. like, Candace has these gloves as Evelina. I was like, girl, let me have those gloves. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm telling you, the looks are by themselves for every single character and even the dancers and how they, you know, outfitted them in their costumes for every scene. It is amazing. Okay. Um, how often do you, how often do you do the production? Is it just like every few years and then will you actually start to travel around and do it in different cities? No, no. Um, traveling would be great. <laughs> 
right? I'm like <laughs> traveling. The traveling with the production would be beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean that would be something. You know, if Tamara as a director wants to. St- yeah, I'm like, if she's ready to, I mean, I'm sure we would all be down for it. Um, yeah. yeah, like Nazinga said, I mean, it's 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 really beautiful to see and taking the, the fresh take each time and just switching up little things here and there just makes it exciting every time just to see it and catch a new glimpse of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we would all continue to do this as many times as, as the people want to see it. So come and see it. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, we actually do, Tamara puts on some type of production every year. We didn't for the last two because of COVID. So this is not right. us. The reason why we're talking about this gap from two years, you know, we did it and this is, but we yeah. literally, every year you can look forward to some type of theater production from Triple Seven Studios. And it's going to be amazing. Um, and I will say, I just want to say to Candace's uh, point, there's even an extra character in our Wiz. Um, <laughs> like we we put a spin on the Wiz. Um, I mean, so- but that's what I think. That's what makes it. That's what makes it so good. Is you know, obviously, when you're doing your own rendition of it, like add some other characters and make it something you know, something you know, bigger and better. Just so that people aren't seeing the same thing over and over again. Exactly. exactly. Well, I think that's really, really awesome. Thank you, ladies, so much for taking the time. Um, I wish we had Tamara here, too, but I'll, I'll catch up with her. I'll, I'll get her at some point. But thank you so, so much. Um, did you want to mention, like, your own social media pages for people to, you know, check you out and follow you as well? Sure. I am on all, all platforms. I am Nazinga B. Everywhere you look, the girl owns her name. She's nothing special. She's just Nazinga B. <laughs> yeah, and if you look up Tamika Ruger, R U G E R, Tamika is T A M E K A, you'll find me um, as well. I'm the only Tamika Ruger. <laughs> okay. okay. And I can be found um, at Candice Danielle, C-A-N-D-I-S Danielle, or Candice Osborne. Um, so either of those will pull up a multitude of pages and things that I have <laughs> been sent to. Um, but yeah, that's that's how you can keep in touch. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us on here tonight. And thank you specifically no, thank you. Um, for highlighting um, the arts, because, you know, we know that it's slowly dwindling, especially in schools and things like that. So any it opportunity is. that people take to highlight the arts and especially black arts, um, that, that is sincerely appreciated as a black artist and a black kid that grew up to be an artist and continues to thrive in that. So thank you so much for allowing us to utilize your space as well tonight.